Hello everyone and welcome to our Ask Lingdog session which we will do several times a year and this time it's mainly for home cinema owners uh, with our MP40, MP50, MP60 because this is about bass, subwoofers, woofers, LFE. Uh, but there's some worthwhile information about woofers or low frequencies in general so it's also good for TEI, stereo amplifier owners and everyone who has an uh, AVR. We have collected some questions uh, in Facebook, Instagram, and also via email. Um, so we will uh, look through them. And uh, I also have some, some graphs. So uh, we can uh, go into our menu as well to, to our MP40. We have an MP40 here. Uh, so we can also see how this is all set up. Um, before we even started, we received uh, uh, one of the earliest questions, uh, and that came from Mark. Uh, and that's a very good start. Uh, I have plenty of subwoofer questions, but will this be about subwoofers or LFE? And that's a brilliant question because subwoofers and LFE are not the same. Um, LFE, as most people know, means low frequency effects, and that is an extra channel um, that is created in the studio. Um, and Dolby and others created this to be independent from the other speakers. Um, but it's very important that you see or you understand this really as an extra channel. It does not mean that the other speakers don't reproduce any bass. Uh, and we have a nice uh, overview or graph uh, about this um, where you can actually see the, the frequency bandwidth of different channels. Uh, it's a bit simplified, but it's uh, so it's good to, to understand this here. And as you can see, the LFE, low frequency effects, does not mean that all the low frequencies are handled by the LFE, it is extra. And the mains and the surrounds can go down to 20 Hz too. And if you take a movie like, for example, Oblivion or Moonfall, they really do. And you can also see that even the immersive channels can contain sound down to 40 Hz. Not in many movies they do, but uh, per specifications they can. So no matter what kind of subwoofer you choose, it really pays out to also make the main speakers and surround speakers as good as you can afford, uh, because the LFE is separate and kind of extra. Um, so do you need a subwoofer for this LFE? Well, chances are that you need it, unless your main speakers and surround speakers are all very large floor standards, uh, but chances are you need a subwoofer for that. So the subwoofer is perfect for that because it's designed to reproduce low frequencies, to reproduce bass. It usually has its own amplifier, so you have more amplification power as well in active subwoofers. Um, so it makes a lot of sense to have this. On the other hand, subwoofer is sometimes uh, easy to misunderstand the word as well, uh, as it implies it's only meant to be for sub-bass frequencies. So we have another graph here, uh, which I like to show you, uh, which is again simplified, but that shows how, let's say on the studio side, on the mixing side, uh, frequencies are named and uh, treated. So you can see sub bass in, in its very meaning, in its original meaning, is more frequencies between 20 and 40 hertz. And then there's the, the bass uh, up 40 hertz and upwards, and then becomes the upper bass. Um, so by that you can see that a subwoofer, you might understand that it's only for a sub bass, but as you saw in the LFE specifications, that's not the case. It can reach up to 80 hertz in Dolby and it can even reach up to 120 hertz in DTS. So it, can, it will reach much higher and it's not just a subwoofer for the sub bass. And as we can see later, uh, the subwoofer even has to carry a lot more than just the LFE. So let's uh, look at the next question, um, which is from Guido. And uh, Guido was asking, I was told that I should set the LFE to the lowest possible frequency to avoid localization. Should I set all speakers to large and let the sub only play the lowest bass? And then we have a matching que question from Marco. 
I read that the best crossover frequency is 80 Hz, so you can't localize the subwoofer. Is that true? And in theory it's true, you can hardly localize frequencies around 30, 40, 50 Hz. Uh, it's our, our hearing ability, our brain doesn't work that way, so you cannot really localize it. Um, but it's really important not only to, to look at the frequency theory or, or localization theory, but look at it from a performance point of view. And by performance I mean the performance of the subwoofer and the performance of your loudspeakers. So let's look in our MP40 equivalent to MP50, MP60 menu um, and how this is set up. So if we go into setup here and go into speakers and room and the speaker setup, uh, you will have this overview of the, the whole system. Um, and then you can go into the speakers and set the speaker sizes. So as you can see here, we have left speakers and right speakers in large and the center speaker in medium. We have an LFE and we have surround speakers in S meaning small. So this is a very typical setup. And if we go into large, because you might think, oh, of course I have large speakers, you set them to large. But if you scroll down below, you can see what that means. Uh, the speaker begins to roll off uh, just above 50 Hertz. And that means that the lower frequency is redirected to the subwoofer. So that is fine. Uh, and that means you can uh, set the subwoofer relatively low in frequency. But it's important to also see the, the whole picture and the other speakers. And if you could look at the center speaker here, very often the center speaker is a little bit smaller. So it's set to medium here. Um, and that means that this channel already begins around 100 hertz to redirect bass to the subwoofer. So you can see the subwoofer suddenly has to carry a lot more than just the LFE channel. It also plays the redirect bass from the large front speakers below 50 hertz, 40, 50 hertz, and the center channel, and that already starts much higher. Um, and then we also have the surround speakers here and surround speakers are set to S and as you can see in the graph that means that it already starts uh, rolling rolling off here and all these frequencies here will be redirected to the subwoofer. So again it's very important to really see um, the whole uh, the whole picture um, and to really be truthful to what your speakers are like. It's not to set it to large because you think you have large speakers. Really look at the frequency bandwidth of your, of your speaker. Um, so back to the original question, can I set the, the LFE, um, if I have one here, to the very, very lowest frequency to avoid localization? No, you have to really look at your main speakers and surround speakers and center speaker. Um, and that defines how you can set the frequency. That's why I said don't only focus on the theory of which frequency, frequency can you hear or locate, um, but really look at the whole picture. The crossover frequency is more defined by your speakers and not only by your subwoofer. Um, if you have uh, good floor standards, then of course it's worthwhile. We will look at some examples uh, uh, later. Um, second thing is about these uh, localization 80 hertz. Um, and I said very low frequencies, it's very hard to locate. Uh, and there was this question from, from Marco, uh, is 80 hertz the, the golden uh, crossover frequency? Mm, not really. Uh, I'd like to show another graph here. Um, and this graph, again, a bit simplified, shows you a typical crossover frequency. And as you can see, there is never such a thing as a, as a brick wall filter. If you set a crossover frequency of 80 hertz, it doesn't mean that the subwoofer suddenly stops playing at 80 hertz. It actually rolls off and blends over to the, to the main speakers. Um, and that means that even if you set this frequency, 
the subwoofer will still play bass at 84, 85, 90, even 100 hertz, just on a lower level. And the theory of not being able to locate, localize a subwoofer is all good, but I can almost promise you if you play um, a double bass or a movie scene uh, or some music and you switch off all your speakers and you close your eyes, you can still point at the subwoofer being somewhere in the room. Why is that? Because of this graph, because of this roll-off, uh, and also because our mind, our, our hearing, we are not stupid. Our brain will always try to localize sound, uh, and it's very good at it. So in theory, there's the, there are these frequencies uh, where, where it's hard to hear where they're coming from, but our brain will try to figure it out Secondly, the subwoofer, if you place it anywhere in the room, it will always interact with the room. And sometimes that is also something that you can hear. Um, and it will always interact with the speakers. So there is some kind of localization going on. And that's why this frequency is really depending on the speaker, on the, all the other speakers, where the subwoofer is placed. We'll come to that later. Uh, and also really how it interacts with the room and the system. Which brings us to our next question. Um, it uh, matches very well. Uh, it comes from Jose. I have Dahlia Euphonia MS4 and currently cut them off at 60 Hz. Some say it should be much higher at 120 Hz, which is correct. Uh, and to answer that question, we really have to look, not only for this speaker, but basically for every speaker, really look at the small print, whether that is a good frequency for the subwoofer and for the speaker or not. So let's look at this uh, DALI speaker, uh, which you mentioned is the DALI Alphonia. And we can see in the, in the frequency range or bandwidth uh, that it's perfectly fine that this speaker plays some bass. It reaches down to 33 hertz at minus 3 dB. Um, so it's actually fine if you, Jose, cut it off at 60 hertz, it fits the speaker very well. Maybe the, someone mentioned the 120 hertz because of the LFE setting, which is something entirely different. So in DTS specifications, LFE could go up to 120 hertz. So maybe that someone picked up that that frequency uh, uh, in this regard, not necessarily because of your Dali speakers. So this speaker, uh, according to the frequency range, it looks fine. Um, but always look at the small print because it's already at minus 3 dB at 33 Hertz, which means don't cross over at 30 Hertz or 33 Hertz uh, or 40 Hertz because that already indicates that the speaker, as good as it is, is already a little bit on its on its limit uh, or its lower bandwidth, the lowest frequency. So that means it's playing these frequencies, but it's not really as good as playing 50, 60, 80 Hertz. Uh, so you really have to be truthful to the speaker and its specs and its performance uh, when you decide whether you speak, set the speaker to medium large or X large. So don't set it to X large just because you like the name uh, X large, that's good. No, look at the specs closely. And we have another matching question from Rohan. Um, my current speakers are very large floor standing, measuring 40 Hertz to 25K. Uh, so I guess I can set the lowest subwoofer frequency. And again, let's look at the speaker specs. Um, he mentioned uh, 40 to 25, but again, please look at the small print because here it says it's down to 40 hertz at minus 6 dB. And that means, sorry to say, Rowan, this speaker is not good at playing 40 hertz. So I would advise not to set it to 40 hertz crossover, not even 50 hertz, because minus 6 dB at 40 means it's really already performing on its edge. And the amplifier has to work very, very hard to let the speaker play around 40 Hertz. Um, so this indicates a much higher crossover frequency uh, to make this loudspeaker that you have perform at its very best. Um, and that, of course, then means that all these low frequencies, let's say you have a crossover frequency at 80 Hertz or something, all these frequency below will be redirected to the subwoofer. Um, so it's very important to always look at both sides, the speaker and the subwoofer, because everything you redirect, you have to ask the question, is your subwoofer up for it? 
is it good enough? Can it cope with all the redirected base uh, that it gets? So in this case, uh, Rowan, you better set it to medium. Um, that's the truth of this speaker, even though you say it's a large floor standing speaker, might be, but the specs a little bit uh, indicate otherwise. Um, but as you can see, the speakers always define the settings and the crossover settings of the actual subwoofer. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, another uh, question. Um, this question is more about the subwoofer performance uh, as such. So we have uh, uh, similar questions coming in from Alan, from Lloyd, from René and from Blum. Uh, why are your Lingdo subwoofers are called woofers? And why is their upper frequency so high? And uh, matching question from Kenneth. Seems like big woofers do not create very good quality output over 100 and 120 hertz. And it's true that our Lingdorf woofers uh, are called BW and boundary woofers and not subwoofers um, because they have a very, right, a very high bandwidth. So they reach very high. Uh, they have no problem to play up to 100 hertz, 200 hertz, even 400 hertz. So why is that? Well, let's look at these frequency uh, spectrum uh, with the channels again. Um, as you can see, the subwoofer has to carry all the low frequency fades, and that goes up to 80 and DTS, even 120 hertz. So you better design a woofer that is capable of playing up to minimum 200 hertz. So it really plays totally in its, uh, as I say, comfort zone. So it, it's really not on its edge, on its performance, but plays everything that can happen on the LFE channel just very, very well, without any performance limits uh, or distortion um, or anything. And also the integrated amplifier is up for it. So that's only the LFE alone. And the second reason why we design our woofers to have a high uh, bandwidth is it also has to uh, carry all the other frequencies. So let's look at this graph very closely. The front speakers, the surround speakers, they can reach down to 20 hertz too. And even the immersive channel can reach down to 40 hertz. So if your speakers, if your front speakers are not huge floor stands, you have to set them to medium and small, as we just discussed before. And then the subwoofer has to play all the bass from the LFE channel and the redirected bass from all other channels, and that can be up to 16 channels. So again, can your subwoofer cope? Is the power handling good enough? Is the frequency bandwidth good enough to, to carry all these? Um, or is there a performance overload uh, happening uh, that the subwoofer cannot cope with it? So we design our subwoofers with a very high bandwidth. So there is no limitation in how to set the crossover frequency with whatever main speakers and surround speakers you have. It will always match and blend in very well with your front speakers. Um, to show uh, or look a little deeper into this, I have uh, looked at some very typical popular subwoofers and looked at their frequency responses, either as given by the manufacturer or by some uh, media review magazines. So let's look at some subwoofers. Uh, not naming any names, of course. Um, so I simplified the graphic a little bit here, but the actual frequency curve is, of course, for real based on an actual measurement. So this first one is a typical and also common subwoofer frequency response. And to be honest, it looks a little bit like a church. Uh, and sorry to be so direct, but why is this even called a subwoofer? Its peak is around 70 hertz, um, but it's not really good at the sub base below that at all. And it isn't good above 80 hertz either. So you really risk a, a performance gap here with your main speakers. And also, even if you ignore that and you have big floor stand speakers at, at the mains, it's not really good at all the low frequencies, LFE frequencies, uh, LFE effects down to 20 hertz or even below either. So this is not really a, a well-performing software, to be honest. Let's look at a second example. Uh, this one is a bit better, but it still looks a bit like a sugarloaf hill in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, it's good around 80 hertz, but 
that's it. Here we have another one. This one reaches a bit higher and it's a bit more rounded, so that's already one step better. But to be honest, it's still not great as an LFE um, because it, it rolls off very, very early. Um, and it's not good for crossing over to your main speakers either because it rolls off very early, very sharp on the other side as well. The next one, it looks much better. Um, here you can see it reaches, first of all, really down to 20 hertz and then it stays fairly even. Um, so you can, first of all, play all the LFE um, frequencies and you can match it very well with your main speakers, with the front speakers and the surround speakers because it has a wider bandwidth and it doesn't have this, this peak uh, where it performs good and not performs well below and above that, that frequency. Uh, and the last one, uh, subwoofer, which is a subwoofer which one MP40 owner recommended to me uh, for its very high SPL. So he bought it because it has very high um, SPL up to 120 dB. You are right. Yes, that's great. But it's still a super narrow band performance, as you can see in this measurement. And again, this is not something I was drawing up. This is an actual measurement. So it's already at minus 10 dB at 80 Hertz. And remember, that's no matter what kind of front speakers you have, that's already not within the, the ideal specs of a Dolby LV channel. So it's minus 10 dB at 80 Hertz, and then it falls off very, very sharply. Um, so again, I show these because to, to answer the original question, why are our Lindorf woofers and our Steinway woofers, of course, as well, are such a high bandwidth design? Well, because of that, uh, to really make alignment uh, crossover with your with all your speakers better and to proper properly uh, reproduce the, the LFE uh, channel. So um, that's why we call them by high bandwidth uh, woofers and even dish the name sub woofers. To summarize, um, the ideal subwoofer setting depends on your main speakers, not only on subwoofer alone. Subwoofers have to play the LFE and the redirected bass from all channels. That's very important to keep in mind. And make sure your subwoofer is capable on both frequency ends, really reaching, reaching down to 20 hertz, ideally a little bit lower, and up to 80 hertz, ideally even 120 hertz, to really fit these specifications. Okay, the next question. Uh, this one is from Qatar. Uh, there's only one LV channel. Does it make sense to have more than one sub? That's a very good question. Uh, similar one from Dennis is two similar subs better. And uh, one of my favorite ones, uh, which I picked up from an from a email from our support team a bit earlier. I know two subs are better than one, but one sub is better for my wallet. From Robin. Well, sorry, Robin, but the sometimes the answer lies in the question. It is performing better, so uh, sometimes it, it's really worth saving a bit longer and then uh, adding the second subwoofer, because to to make it short, yes, two subwoofers is better than one. Um, two subwoofers, you gain more dynamic headroom. Uh, you have uh, more power in reserve because you have with active woofers two amplifiers as well. Um, you won't overpower it so easily and the two subwoofers excite the room much better in the low frequency. So you basically, apart from the financial invest, you, you basically only have advantages with two subwoofers if they are placed well uh, in the room. So let's look at the MP40 menu again. It's very easy to uh, change it here in the menu. You go to edit configuration, press on the LV, and here you can basically set the number of subwoofers. So here we have, let's say, two subwoofers. Uh, you can have different gain if that makes sense, uh, and you can have uh, different EQs uh, if that makes sense. But let's just have two subwoofers. Um, now you have two LV and you can see here how they are connected uh, and then of course you can uh, do like oh let's go let's go to four subwoofers 
Um, in the introduction of this or invitation to this session, I even said uh, we can have something like 4D base. And you might have read that and thought, what, what kind of marketing is that 4D base? Well, it actually exists uh, in, in a way. Um, of course, subworlds are mainly 2D. So you have it in, in one level and not even 3D. But some car audio uh, started to have uh, it labeled 4D base. Um, for example, some, some BMW cars uh, have, have that great sound system with 4D base. And what that means is that you not only have subwoofers in a room or in a, in, a, in a car, but actually have something more, and that is a tactile base experience. And that's what you can do in our menu as well. So if you go back to our menu here, you can also say, um, I want not only four subwoofers, I will have a fifth one. And then now look at this um, menu here. This is the LFE number five. And you can tick this button box here. LFE five is a transducer, not a real sub. And when you do that, this channel number five here is now can now be connected to a so-called base shaker. Uh, or transducer which will be mounted underneath your seat or sofa and some professional cinemas have that uh, some some great home cinemas have that and some car systems have that and it really gives uh, uh, another dimension and that's where the 4d names come from to the base experience and if you set this up very well it's not like your seat is is rumbling uh, it's really a very very discreet effect that just the base that you hear is more intense. Um, so it's very, very important to set this very subtle uh, in, in a good way. So you just feel more bass without uh, without that your chair is, is actually moving. Um, anyway, so this was about uh, more subwoofers. Um, let's go back to something more useful. Let's say four and done. Having said that, um, these four subwoofers uh, or multiple LFE is uh, it gives you some advantages but it's still a little bit dump setup uh, because remember all these four subwoofers or let's say two they have to be placed somewhere in the room and they will all receive the same signal they will still receive a mono LFE signal and the redirected bass from the left and right speakers which will be monoized uh, and also played through several woofers in the room. So that sometimes doesn't really make sense. And that's, that, that's why one more clever arrangement is actually uh, a left and a right subwoofer. So let's go back um, into, into the menu. Uh, before we go that, uh, I would like to read out the, the question matching that. What's better, multiple LFE or left and right subwoofers. And that came from Dennis, from Roger, from Kenneth, from JL Top, and Mark and Martin. Sorry to combine all your questions in one, but I hope uh, it will be answered as you were thinking. So let's be very clear here. Left and right subwoofers are much better than just multiple LFE. And reason for that is that you really retain the left and right sound information on the sound mix. Remember that LFE is a mono signal, but the subwoofer in most systems always plays the redirected bass from the left and right speakers, from all the left and right speakers. Uh, so, and that should not be monoized and played from different subwoofers in the room. Um, so if you really retain the surround experience, you really retain the left and right experience. And secondly, the, the crossover to your left and right speakers is much better. So you don't integrate left and right speakers with one LFE woofer or two LFE woofers somewhere in the room. You really make the right speakers blend in perfectly with the right subwoofer and the left speakers blend in perfectly with the left subwoofer. So let's look at the uh, menu in our MP40 here. So we click on edit and then we go for the LFE. 
we change to no subwoofer, sorry, to no LV, and then we add a left and a right subwoofer. If you click left, it will be automatically left and right, of course. So subwoofer used. You could set an EQ here and an amp delay or whatever, but we don't care about that now. And now you can see we have a left and a right woofer that perfectly matches all the right speakers, all the left speakers. So the surround experience left and right is retained. There's one other option that I want to line out here and show in the menu, and that is if you have a left and a right woofer um, and you still want to make one performance step up, you could add an LV again. Um, so that makes sense if we go back into the menu. You keep the LV and you still add a left and a right woofer. So now you have a left and right woofer that perfectly blends together with your left and right speakers and you can have a separate woofer only playing dedicated for the LFE channel. And that can really bring a big performance up because now all these woofers can really play what they are good at. But again, this is just a very advanced setup, just mentioning it here. So uh, to summarize, multiple woofers are better for each sound performance and for room acoustics. Left and right woofers will integrate much better with your main speakers. And left and right woofers match left and right sound effects as mixed in the movie or especially as mixed in music as well. Okay, the next big one, uh, which has the most uh, questions coming in, is where to place the woofers. Uh, now we have added plenty of woofers in our setup here, so where to place them all. Uh, and that came from Artif. Uh, I've always wondered whether to place woofers in front corners or opposite corners. Also from Dennis, subs beside the main speakers or behind. From Thomas, you advise corner placement, but isn't the bass much too loud there? And from uh, Sereri, Klaas and Morton, why the boundary woofer concept that we have in of Audio? Um, and to answer these questions, uh, let's look at some, again, simplified room drawings to give you a better understanding of what goes on in a room regarding the bass. Um, unfortunately, we as human beings cannot see sound waves. Uh, but it's really helpful if you imagine low frequencies in the room and imagine them like big water waves. To a degree, they really behave like water waves. Um, so let's look at some, some drawings here. If you place uh, a subwoofer somewhere in the room, uh, of course it will play some uh, bass in the direction of the woofer cone, but in low frequencies, what really happens is that every subwoofer, every even every floor stand speaker, in the low frequencies, it radiates sound. It really spreads like a big water wave when you drop a big stone. It really spreads around the speaker. And what then happens is that the same bass that goes to the front into the room also goes to the back of the room, hits the wall and comes back delayed. And this delay is kind of out of phase with the original waves. So you don't have one bass impact, not one bass punch, but kind of two. Um, and that will not only be delayed, but it will also cause some cancelling out and, and some overlapping uh, of, of bass frequencies. So it will have it has many, many, many side effects. And then the same happens, happens sorry, the same happens uh, to the side wall as well. So, the, as I said, the subwoofer radiates sound all around itself. It also radiates bass to the nearest sidewall. And again, from the sidewall, the bass will come back delayed. Out of phase, it will spoil the original bass wave. Uh, it will smear the bass, it will make it softer, it will even cancel out some frequencies. Uh, it only has bad side effects. And now we only talk about one woofer. Imagine you have a second subwoofer and you place that in the room. Uh, then you have back wall effects, you have two side wall effects, and you have 
overlapping, several frequencies overlapping with each other. If we move the subwoofer closer, as close as possible to the wall behind it, uh, one thing already changes. Now the second reflected base coming from the wall is almost at the same time as the original wave. So you really have a much better base impulse response, a much better punch and impact of the sound. And things really change, and that's the setup that we always recommend, is to really do boundary woofer setup. So if you move the subwoofer in the corner of a room, ideally the front corner, the sound reflection from the nearest wall behind it and from the near sign wall and the original bass coming from the cone of the woofer is almost the same. So this setup really gives you the best impulse response, the best bass punch, um, almost no delay, almost no out of phase issues, almost no cancelling out effects uh, or, or bass adding up. Of course the bass is louder in the corner because every wall, side wall, wall behind and actually also the floor uh, they they um, increase the bass by some dB, but that can be addressed by the room correction, by the speaker calibration, in our case with Room Perfect anyway. So having a bit more uh, volume level, a bit higher uh, volume there, is not a problem. What we want is the perfect timing of the bass in that corner. And that is even better if you really have, uh, as we addressed before, a left and a right woofer, have that in both room corners and then you really have the stereo surround effect uh, from left and right which you have from the speakers anyway so you also have them from the woofers uh, it retains all these effects and secondly you have the punch and, and uh, impulse response from the corner woofer placement you could also have uh, that was another question also have now woofers in the rear corners, but I would only advise that if you really have a very long room or many rows or many seats, because they will all add up uh, in it in a way. So you get a very, um, a very you get a softer base. Uh, it's it's slightly more even if you measure it, but the the impulse and the, the base wave coming at you is always better if you place all the woofers in front. So we really would recommend left right woofers in the corners if possible all in front because then you really have this impact coming at you and not just a, a base bath uh, uh, around yourself. Um, so that's what we really recommend here. I have one more graph to show you uh, that is actually a measurement uh, and uh, on the left hand side you see a freestanding woofer and as you can see the, the first is in the time domain around uh, 24 to 26 here. That's the original base impulse response and then you see an, a second uh, response which is between 30 and 32 in the time domain here which is probably the wall behind the woofer so that's the same base impulse just later and that is very audible uh, and then we have a second uh, sorry a third one here between the uh, time 36 and 40 it's the same again it's a little bit lower in level but it just smears the base and if we compare that to the same woofer placed in the corner as a boundary woofer, uh, of course you get overall a little bit more, but you can easily see that it's one base impulse. And that is uh, what we hear. So we not only hear in the frequency domain, we really hear in timing. And that is super important to really get that base that you want uh, and blend in well with the other speakers, with the front speakers. Uh, so you really have uh, many advantages for this. So uh, I hope now you can dream a little because we have added uh, multiple woofers. We have uh, advised to upgrade the front speakers because they can contain bass. Or they will. The channels will contain bass as well. Um, and we also uh, have advised to have uh, maybe even an exciter, uh, but that's a little bit uh, extra, of course. Um, you can, of course also have only one LFE and I hope this already gave you some understanding that it's very important to match the LFE with the front speakers uh, with the surround speakers even if you have only one so 
Don't look at the subwoofer on its own. Don't let the speakers on its own or any frequency theories. It's always the performance of the whole system, be it one subwoofer or two left and right or even more than that. So I hope it was worthwhile for you. Uh, thanks for sending in all the questions. If some questions were not answered, we will definitely answer them directly uh, on Facebook, Instagram and by email. So don't worry about that. We will have another session. So uh, I hope we will see you soon in another one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.